Well, the Minister of State for Budgets and National Planning is in our Abuja studios, Mr. Clem Agba. You're welcome to Sunrise Elite this morning. Thank you for having me. The Economic and Sustainability Plan, um, I do not know if all, of, a lot of the benefits that have accrued as a result of this scheme, people understand that this is what the, uh, the scheme is about. Can you just shed a little more light on, you know, how we come about this name sometimes and what yeah. is expected under them? Okay, th thank you very much. Uh, you recall that uh, the 2020 budget uh, was uh, passed and signed into law uh, by Mr. President December uh, 17th, 2019. And uh, sometime in February or March, COVID uh, 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 came upon us. This wasn't something that was expected. And it was something too that was not very well uh, understood. And uh, what we were told uh, from uh, Bill Gates and others was that uh, Africans were going to be dying on the streets. And so uh, Mr. President set up the Economic Sustainability Committee uh, headed by His Excellency the Vice President. And what were the things that we were supposed to do? One, ensure that lives were not lost. You know, we had to protect, come up with uh, policies and uh, programs that was to save lives. Uh, two, uh, we know that uh, since we didn't understand the nature of the disease and the economies were going to be shut down, not just here in Nigeria, uh, but uh, uh, everywhere in the world, it meant that economic activities were going to go down. And so we were going to go into either a recession or a depression. And so the whole aim was come up with policies to ensure that even if we went into a recession, it's not deep, that there will be a quick uh, uh, recovery. The other is people are going to be staying at home. How do we ensure that we retain jobs? You know, how do we ensure that we even create more jobs? Or more importantly, to try and save uh, uh, job losses. How do we uh, protect uh, the vulnerable ones in the, in the society? And it was also an opportunity to take uh, a review of our health uh, infrastructure and to say what state are they, what is it that can be done uh, to ensure uh, that uh, they, are, they are brought into world class uh, uh, standard. And then uh, ha the aviation industry for instance, uh, uh, the hospitality, and everything was going to be shut down. How do we ensure that we provide some level of uh, succor? So those were the terms of reference. Uh, for us, and uh, I want to say that uh, uh, given the results that we have seen, it was a success because it was just a transit plan, you know, uh, a 12 month uh, plan. Was it a plan that was supposed to continue to, to run? Like you know, the economic recovery and growth plan was a plan that we had, which yeah, was uh, uh, going to, to end, and we were also developing a new national development plan 2021 to. Uh, 2025. So we had to come up with the sustainability plan uh, just to ensure that we bounce uh, back uh, quickly. So the economic sustainability plan, as we know it, is ended? It's ended uh, uh, technically in terms when you look at it from a, a 12 month uh, uh, perspective in terms of funding. However, some of the programs are still running. You understand the funds are still available to the agencies that haven't gotten uh, uh, completion. And uh, that's, those are the ones that uh, where you are getting the funds from the budget. Uh, because with the 2.3 trillion, it's only 500 billion that was taken from special accounts uh, that is in the budget. So the other ones that are interventions from financial institutions uh, based on uh, uh, negotiated uh, uh, rates and conditions is still, is still running. Because okay. it's not affected by by the budget. So, but for those w which will keep going on, for instance, uh, the, the, the money is supposed to be released by the NSIA, uh, I think mm -hmm. about 10 billion naira for mm -hmm. solar projects and to get uh, us coupling the solar, um, solar equipment uh, up and going. I want to imagine that they are run like businesses. Uh, what, under what um, covering will those ones, under what liner will those ones now come since the economic the economic sustainability plan is technically over okay a, a plan 
the, the economic sustainability plan is now being succeeded by the uh, national, national development, development plan. Uh, plan. So it's not as safe. There's a truncation. You know, certain things are still running uh, in the plan. But I, I think that uh, the whole idea of me coming here is to let Nigerians know what we did, you know, and uh, the, the, the rate of uh, success. You know, uh, why I say that, there were a couple of programs. First, on the health uh, sector, uh, there were programs around the uh, uh, food uh, security. Remember at that period, people really couldn't move. Even farm products could not uh, uh, move. Uh, Mr. President had to approve a release of 70,000 tons of uh, food from the strategic uh, uh, food uh, uh, reserves. And then uh, the, the study also showed that we were losing uh, about 60% of whatever is produced in the country. So it was also an opportunity uh, to try to provide access to the market uh, for uh, farmers. And you know that majority of our farmers live in the rural areas, okay? And 60% uh, uh, of these people live in the rural areas. 80% of what we consume come from these uh, rural areas, which is why the economic sustainability plan, this aspect of it also dovetailed into the new national development plan, where rural development has now been separated from agriculture. You know, we are now seeing uh, it as integrated rural development. Because uh, for sustainability purposes, you don't just go and put a road in the, in the rural areas around the agro corridors and think that something has been done. Other levels or uh, other forms of infrastructure also needs to go to those areas, taking broadband technology to, to those areas. So uh, the issue of uh, off-grid uh, power. And that is why you see that all of these are in the plan because it's when you bring this infrastructure uh, to these uh, rural areas, food that is being produced cannot move. It will attract investors uh, to those uh, areas. Maybe some might just go there to aggregate uh, from the, the, the farmers what has been produced. Others may decide to set up processing uh, plant because now they have power and they, are, uh, they also have the power to communicate to the rest uh, of the world and are also able to easily move uh, this uh, product. So if you look at it from that perspective, about 495 uh, kilometers of uh, uh, roads, uh, as rural roads around agro corridors, which cuts across 366 communities, you know, we are constructed. Okay, so let me reel some of the figures which you gave in your presentation about the success of the work, I mean, of the plan so far. Yeah. You talked about 1.3 million jobs being retained through the MSME and payroll support, yeah. 774,000 jobs. I imagine that was the one that was supposed to be created under the Ministry of Labor yes. and Employment, which became yes. somewhat controversial, but it went ahead. Yeah. Um, and then there's a 26,000 26, yeah. and 21 jobs. You also yeah. talked about... 1.1 million Nigerians benefiting from the different schemes. Um, I want to ask if this 1.1 million Nigerians, which you talk about ben, uh, benefiting under the ESP MSME Survival Fund, are they the same people? Are they included in the same 1.3 million jobs which you speak about? Yeah. The, the total jobs created within the period uh, of the economic sustainability and through the programs, it's about 2.1 million uh, jobs. Okay. But through MSMEs, uh, through the 774,000 uh, uh, jobs, and through the rural roads and the road uh, uh, rehabilitation that took place uh, during the period. But can we really count the 774,000 jobs as real jobs, knowing that they were just one-offs? Uh, and that was that. We're going to be paid once, and that was that. Remember the situation. Nobody knew what was going to happen. People needed to eat, they needed to survive. It is true. What I'm saying, if you pay one person a one-off, if you pay the person for one month, the person doesn't have that same job again for the rest of the year, does they, that really they, count they, as a they, job? They were paid for three months, and that's why there's another program, uh, which is the National Poverty Reduction with Growth uh, Strategy, where uh, some of these other programs uh, are going to be revisited with a view to seeing how they can be sustained. Recall that uh, with the... Uh, COVID-19, uh, we lost about 57% of revenues. Uh, you were, I, I remember you were at Transcorp when the World Bank uh, uh, made the presentation uh, around uh, uh, our, our revenue situation, where we currently are taught from the bottom 
in terms of revenue to, to GDP. Resources are scarce. You understand? We have to do what we have to do within the limit of the resources. That's uh, that understandable. We have. I'm just trying to be sure that we're painting the right picture. Yeah, we are painting the right picture. The program said we are doing this for three months. You understand? And we did it for three months. You know, we kept people alive for, for, for three months. But the program goes beyond uh, uh, that. Work is still uh, ongoing in other areas because you are just taking only the 774,000 uh, uh, jobs. In the health sector, for instance, where this country had only about, uh, I, I would say, three and a half molecular labs. Mm. We built new molecular labs, about 52. Honorable Minister, I'm going to ask you to, take, to hold your thoughts. We will come back and speak a lot more to the health yeah. sector, which yeah. is highly critical when yeah. we come back from this break. Please okay. stay with us. Mr. Clem Agba, Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, is still here with us in our budget studios. And I was just saying that you should hold your thoughts and we'll talk a little more about health. Yeah. And health is particularly important because let's not forget that even though the, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the committee now, which was briefing, Presidential Task Force, yeah, which was brief, yeah. briefing Nigerians at that point, you know, telling us what was happening with regards to COVID, you know, did a young man's job in terms of, you know, keeping Nigerians updated. Uh, at some point, they decided to take a tour of facilities around the country, health mm. facilities around the country. And we heard the, the uh, secretary to the government of the Federation, I'm sure you heard him as well, saying yeah. that he didn't know that our health, um, situa our health facilities were in such bad situations. They knew they were bad, but not this bad. So when you talk about interventions in health, where would you say that the Economic Sustainability Plan was most concerned, um, but where would you say the impact of their uh, in intervention can be most felt? Okay, it's true that the PTF uh, went around the, the country to look at uh, the tertiary, that's the federal tertiary institutions, and uh, what they saw was really, really bad. And uh, because of that, considering the illness at hand then, there were four critical areas for us to intervene. One was the provision of the personal protective uh, equipment for the frontline uh, uh, workers. Two was the need to build isolation centers. You could see what was going on in Europe where they couldn't find enough space. But just like I said, nobody planned for, uh, for this. Uh, three, there was the need to have uh, intensive care uh, units. So that was another area of intervention uh, for us. And then uh, the last but not the least is setting up of molecular labs. Because you have to do the diagnostic to know exactly uh, what is wrong. Uh, uh, before the ESP, if you were living in Sokoto or Port Harcourt or Lagos, and there is a suspicion of Lassa fever, they have to take the samples to Irua Specialist Hospital in Edo. And God forbid, before they come back, the person is, uh, is gone. So that was how bad the situation uh, was. But today, with the intervention of the ESP, you don't need to leave your state. All 36 states are now covered with molecular labs. In fact, the 52 federal uh, tertiary institutions now have molecular labs, so they can do all forms of diagnosis. You don't need to take any sample outside the country or from one end uh, of the country to the other. Two, uh, for each of these hospitals, uh, we put in money to build 10 better uh, intensive uh, care units. Well, I, sorry, Honorable Minister, to interrupt you. I still know that you know samples are still being taken outside of this country as a result of sequencing. I, I think that this was also something that was revealed by an eminent virologist in that regard. Now, I do not know whether it's, it is that we're not capable or we do not have the human capital, because it's one thing to build the facilities, it's another thing to have people who can mm. actually do this work. Uh, but, but, you know, just to make that point, because that was something that came to the fore. When did this come to the fore? Uh, this year. 
This, the, that came to the fore this year. I, I don't know it's whether it's January you, this, 2022. I do not know if you missed it in the news. Did you see it mm. in the news at all? Yeah, I didn't. Especially when Omicron uh, yeah. came to the fore, there was revelations yeah. about Omicron um, mm. and the sequencing because it was discovered in South Africa yeah. ab as to whether or not you know Nigeria was able to you know discover variants of mm. this particular COVID. There were deficiencies in that regard. I don't know if you heard. Ni Niger you Ni Nigeria is able to do those sequencing and we've got state-of-the-art equipment and we have the capability, we have the people to do that which is uh, required. The only issue is that there are some of the centers that still need to be certified by NCDC okay. before they can be put uh, to use. So while we, while we wait for, for, for that to happen, um, mm. you know, and I'm sure that, you know, that if there's any area where it can be felt yeah. uh, in terms of the interventions of the ESP, it certainly yeah. will be in the area of building molecular labs. But aside that, uh, yes, we saw the tents that were put up, the temporary measures put up for isolation. Uh, how have no, we, we been We went able beyond to those temporary ones. It was within the first couple of months yes. that you had those tents, okay? But mo molecular labs have been built, isolation centers have been built, and I've been going around the country uh, to see for myself uh, what, what has been done. Uh, we've also gotten third party monitors because I can't cover uh, everywhere. I'm sure you saw the situation in Port Harcourt when I went to the University of Port Harcourt uh, teaching hospital and for the first time I complained about what I saw there because it was totally different from what I have seen from other 10 uh, different centers across uh, uh, the, the country. So a, a, a lot of progress uh, has been made. It's just that things seem to be normal now. Remember, just take your mind back to the early uh, months of COVID, the fear, you know, th that gripped people, how worried people are. Even those who used to come to take your sample, you'd see how they would, they would dress up. But do they do that anymore? No. You understand? So th that is to tell you how far we, 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 we did well with the sustainability plan. And in, in all of these institutions, uh, uh, okay, they have enough uh, personal protective uh, equipment for two years. We also had to go over and beyond uh, to, to get some hazard allowance for frontline workers, although that became a, a labor issue uh, later. It was not at the instance of the medical personnel, it was at the instance of government to say the frontline workers you know, should be given some form of uh, motivation. And once that was done, every medical personnel felt that uh, it was something that they should uh, get. It was part of the sustainability uh, uh, plan. plan. Okay, yeah. let's go to Lagos now. I understand my colleagues have questions for you. Gentlemen. Thank you, Mokwe. Let me, uh, Mr. Agua, one, let me take the, let me take you back to the uh, a bit about agriculture that you started with earlier and uh, one of the uh, object well the major objective of the agriculture part the agriculture and food security part was to create five million jobs in the agricultural sector while boosting agricultural production and guaranteeing food security and um, part of the project elements include identifying to 20,000 to 100 thousand hectares of land per state for agricultural use. Uh, the first question that I want to ask about that is, how much did the states uh, partner with the federal government on this? What was the cooperation, what was the level of cooperation to be able to achieve some of these things? Okay, th thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, with the Economic Sustainability Plan, we had uh, a lot of work with, uh, with the states. Uh, they were uh, pre-informed of what the, the plans uh, were, and we also got uh, their buy-in. And uh, in the agriculture sector, what was more important was the post-harvest uh, losses. Because uh, when you're looking at uh, increasing of acreages, 20,000 to 100,000 uh, uh, hectares, it was more for the future. So it, what, what was done in those areas where states had provided uh, land was land clearing in preparation for, for the future. But the issue then was what we were currently producing for every 10,000 tons, we were losing 6,000. And so that was a low-hanging fruit to be dealt with. 
And that's why the issue of those rural roads was very, very important. And uh, I recall that uh, when I went to Imo State to, uh, to monitor some of what was going on, I was even surprised that in some areas uh, where I came from, they were already waiting for uh, inauguration of those, uh, of those roads. Uh, that's how fast uh, it was. And the community people were really very happy to say that in the past, we would have lost all of this product that we have. But now it's easy on us to move these products to the market. In fact, we no longer even go to the market. The market comes to us to buy uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, product. So for the 20,000 to 100,000 cultivation, it's more of a futuristic uh, uh, plan, which is also still in the uh, national development plan. And that is why those 5 million that we, we, we plan for is not mentioned in the number of jobs uh, that were uh, created. What uh, was a little, what raised that question with me, Mr. Agba, is that the timeline in the plan says 12 months. So I'm wondering if it was futuristic, yeah. it, it, that wasn't included in, 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 the, in the plan. So I'm just wondering uh, how, that, how that is. So what's the 12-month timeline? While the objective is 5 million jobs, and then the, there was supposed to be a partnership with the states within those 12 months. Like I said, you know how land issues go. The plan is not just on its own. Like I've said, uh, the economic sustainability plan was a plan midwifing both the ERGP and the new national development plan. So you, you don't say because uh, you had a plan and that plan period has expired, you abandon all of what uh, you have done. It's like uh, a man and a woman agreeing to get married and saying we're going to have uh, four, four children. You are not going to have all of those children in the same year. You are also not going to have, even if you, uh, yeah, the woman gets pregnant, there is a period that naturally you will need to, to go through. The issue is, is there cooperation with the states? Yes. Are the states providing land? Yes. Is land clearing going on? Yes. That is a process. It doesn't mean that uh, right from day one, once you, 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 you start it, you have everything uh, uh, planted. A lot of land clearing was done in the southern part of, uh, of the country. Okay, well, you, you told my colleague earlier that uh, you know, the, technically the ESP is, uh, has stopped because it's supposed to be a 12-month 12 12 plan. So I'm suspecting then there would be yeah. some kind of succession plan to this economic sustainability problem and I'm uh, economic sustainability plan and I'm not talking about the national development plan in order to ensure that the success is recorded especially with this agricultural sec uh, section of the plan that you've talked about is sustained what's the sustainability plan for this plan the national development plan 2021 to 2025 is the sustainability plan for the ESP. And that's why, because we knew the National Development Plan was going to come. And that's why we said a 12 month uh, period for that plan. And what you refer to, uh, this other aspect, it was not supposed to come from the 500 billion. Like I did uh, mention, the 500 billion was the one that actually, in, in real terms, uh, has a 12 month span because it's based on the budget. You know, and the budget has a lifespan of uh, uh, one year. But the other uh, programs in, in the plan, which are, are facilities from the financial institutions, continues to run. And so that does not, uh, that does not end because they are not uh, limited by the, by the law, or by, by, by the budget. You know, what we did was work with the Central Bank of uh, Nigeria, negotiated rates and ensure that the interest rates were single uh, uh, digit. And the moratoriums were also given. And then we also said the crop areas that has to be covered. So it's something that is still, uh, uh, is, is still running. And that's the bigger part of the sustainability uh, plan because the total uh, stimulus package is 2.3 trillion, but government was only providing 500 billion from the limited resources that we, that we had. And those 500 billion were gotten from special accounts. 
Okay, so let's talk about the jobs part because it's a big deal. We're dealing with unemployment, 33%. And I mean, in that plan, you said that part of the successes was saving and creating what, 2 million jobs. But in that same year, I'm talking last year now, the report by the UNDP and the National Bureau of Statistics showed that 20% of full-time workforce actually lost their jobs. Uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Incidentally, at uh, the time when the ESP was meant to be, you know, operating. So you say 2 million jobs were saved and created. Well, there's still that 774,000 part, which some people will say, well, was for three months. So they might want to subtract it for that. But really, what is the plan to fully recover those jobs? Because as I speak with you, there are a lot of Nigerians listening now that are part of that one out of five that lost their jobs. First and foremost, when we say government, government is not just the federal government of Nigeria. And uh, what I have reported is the contribution of the federal government of Nigeria to either saving jobs or creating jobs. What we also reported are the numbers from the programs that, we, that are based on the economic sustainability plan for the one year. We did not cover other programs outside of the economic uh, sustainability plan. I mean, the, the, the numbers of jobs uh, that are created. We did not add up the, the numbers of the jobs that were either saved by the states or created by the states, if any was done. So you, you, you have the federal government, you have the state government, and you have uh, the, the local government. And it's all of this that makes up uh, 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 government. There are several good things that happened with the economic uh, sustainability plan. As I went around the country for town hall meetings, I think it was both in Kano and in Lagos, where a group of those who were trained in uh, the ICT and also VSAT uh, uh, installation told me that they have set up a group, uh, a WhatsApp group, where they communicate with one another. They are beginning to employ people. We don't have those numbers, and those numbers have not been added to what I have uh, 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 reported. Uh, they even told me there, there, was, uh, uh, there were about two ladies who mentioned that they went through the, the visa training, but in, during the course of installation, there are heights that they have to climb. And because they are ladies, they are unable to do that. So what they do with their WhatsApp group is reach out to their male folks to say, come help us do this. They are beginning to pass on jobs from one uh, person to the other. Where some are having so much to do, they are passing on these jobs to, uh, to their other colleagues. I found that this was also happening in, uh, in Port Harcourt. But these numbers have not been uh, captured. So there is a whole lot of good uh, that has come out of the economic sustainability plan. Remember that at the beginning we were, expected, uh, we were expecting that people should just be dying on the streets. That didn't happen. And it, it, it didn't happen not because we, we folded our arms. It didn't happen because something was done. And I think that we need to recognize that fact, that government did something. You know, the economy itself, one of the, 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 the uh, objective was for it not to go into a deep recession. Some countries are still battling recession, some of the so-called advanced uh, countries. But we only had a recession for, for two months, and we came out of it. That is something uh, that is good. Even inflation, just a few months uh, before uh, the, uh, uh, the, the restriction, inflation has started trending up, both headline, core, and food uh, uh, in inflation. And it went on and on for almost uh, 18 months till uh, April uh, 2021. 20, uh, but since then, we have seen inflation trending down. Yes, it's still uh, high, you understand, but it's now on a positive trajectory, trending down both headline inflation, core inflation, and food inflation. That is something Honorable that is Minister, positive. It's not just happening on its be own. Because of our it's time. because there were some forms of... I, I have to jump uh, in now. Pardon me. 
and um, I mean, it would be good to have a figure, really. And I mean, talk to the handshake with state, so Nigerians can know just how many jobs were created. Because we know how many jobs were lost. 20%, one out of every five full-time employees actually lost their jobs, according to that report. But uh, quickly, I'd like you to talk about the challenges in a, in a minute or two, because you have spoken about the challenges of the ERGP, why it didn't quite meet the targets that were set. But for the ESP, you, you said it was to s you wanted to save lives, ensure that economic activities continued, create jobs, save jobs, and the rest. And then we had, you know, that Twitter ban so it took a lot of jobs was that a challenge for you in trying to create jobs you realize that with a policy of the government trying to create jobs also led to job losses was that a challenge for you it was a challenge uh, for me and I think that uh, the Twitter issue has uh, uh, been settled uh, I think that is uh, something that is uh, that is good uh, negotiations have been held Agreements have been made, and we are back on stream. I, I think that that's what is, uh, what is important. But it, was it because of Twitter that we were losing jobs? <laughs> Nigerians were still having other forms or ways of uh, communicating. But really, uh, this is not the reason why I'm here uh, today. I'd like to concentrate more on the economic uh, uh, okay, sustainability so plan and its implementation. All right, let, let me pick on one of those other items, which is, appears to be top on some of the list in that document that you put out. And that has to do with the NSIA funding solar power Niger with 10 billion naira as part of 5 million household connection targets. Could you talk a little more about this? I mean, yes, you, we see that uh, NSIA has agreed for that, but have funds been released and to who? Again, uh, this, this, this is an area I don't have uh, so much of the details because uh, I can speak more on the 500 billion because we control the release of those funds. So I can't say specifically uh, to whom funds have been released uh, for what they have been used. But for other forms of interventions that are outside uh, of my brief, I do not have uh, those uh, details. Okay, is it possible you, you tell us or know about what was the criteria for selecting this five million households and how are they going to be situated? Now you are going uh, deeper into more technical things and that's why the various MDAs have various uh, technical capabilities and they determine what they do. Mine is just to do the fund release, monitoring and evaluation. Okay, so since the National Development Plan is supposed to feed in and continue from the ESP, what do people expect if they benefited from the ESP? Do they expect that the uh, NDP will automatically reach out to them and continue those projects where they are needed? With the NDP, if uh, you look at it critically, the NDP is supposed to be driven by the organized uh, uh, private sector. Uh, we uh, uh, expect that uh, about uh, 350 trillion uh, will be required uh, to, to do this. And of this, almost 300 trillion is coming from the organized uh, private sector, whereas the government is just supposed to contribute about 50 uh, uh, trillion, uh, where the federal government brings in about 30 and the states uh, 20. In, in the conceptualization of the NDP, we had to ensure uh, that the development of, uh, of it was more from the, uh, driven by the private uh, sector because it's supposed to be a private sector uh, driven uh, plan. What we have done as government is to facilitate the plan. Uh, what we have done, uh, realizing with the organized private sector, I've said, based on previous plans and ERGP, what are the things that are militating against uh, the private sector uh, from not only running but uh, flying. And that's why for the first time we developed uh, a volume three uh, of, uh, of the plan. In the past there was only one volume, which is just the plan. This time we have three volumes. Uh, volume one, the plan. Volume two, are uh, the uh, prioritized uh, projects that have been uh, costed. And then the volume three is the legislative uh, 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 imperative, where we look at the various laws that we have uh, that are working against the ease of doing uh, uh, business and therefore militating against the private sector uh, from doing well. We also looked at the various uh, policies 
uh, that we have uh, that are also working against the private sector from uh, uh, driving uh, the, the economy. So the economic sustainability plan itself was more from government uh, intervention, whereas the national development plan goes much, much beyond the uh, uh, government, but also uh, the organized private sector and then the sub-national government. You know, I must say uh, quickly, before I take this back to Mark, where that, that NDP is very ambitious. I mean, looking at the, the size of it alone, you see it's almost 20 times uh, 2022 budget. And the private sector, as you said, is meant to drive that particular one, giving over 80% in terms of funding. Can the private sector really bring that much to the table? Right now, uh, when you look at the Nigerian uh, GDP, 90% uh, of it is private sector, so they're already doing that. So what we are trying to do is to make it much, much easier. Uh, when you refer to the budget, the budget that we have is not a national budget. What you, the numbers you look at is the federal government budget of Nigeria. The national budget will be the budget of the federal government, the budget of the 36 states plus FCT, and then the budget of the 774 local governments. That's when it is national. You have to add those numbers. But even when you put all of those numbers together, it's still only about 8 or 9 percent of uh, the GDP. So I, I don't think that it is too uh, ambitious. And we, we had captains of industry uh, in the development of uh, the plan. Our Tedo Peter side was the co-chair of uh, the National Steering Committee. Uh, we had the uh, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, we had Smidin, the Nigerian Economic uh, Summit Group, the Nigeria Economic uh, Society. You know, we brought in all the players yeah, uh, who, who should know what the issues are in the private uh, sector, uh, who should know what the challenges are and how they can be removed. We were quite open uh, uh, with this. You know, we didn't come to dictate to say that this is what must be done. And for the first time, we are developing a plan that is bottom-up, truly developed by Nigerians, not using consultants. In the past, consultants sit down, they write the plan, and then it's sent to both the states and the federal government to say, yeah, this is what we will do. But this time around, it was totally different. Now, some people will argue, I mean, the consultants are in the Nigerians as well. But, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we don't know whether we've been using foreign consultants or we've been using... Nigerian consultants. Have we been using Nigerian consultants? I think it's been a combination of both. But okay. the difference this time is that Nigerians, you know, there were 26 technical working groups where we had over 1,600 Nigerians uh, working. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, youths, women, people with uh, uh, some uh, challenges. They were all involved in the conceptualization of the, of the plan. For you, what would you say the biggest lesson we learned from the implementation of the um, economic sustainability plan was? Uh, for me, uh, the, the, the challenge, first, a, a lesson which was uh, positive is that with the plan, well, there was strong monitoring. You know, uh, like we'll, we'll say, if, if you expect something, you have to inspect it because uh, what is not, uh, you, you are going to lose uh, what is not uh, inspected. And that's where the, my Port Harcourt visit again uh, comes to, to fall. I was disappointed with what I saw in the isolation center. It was totally uh, different. Well, they uh, claimed that they were, you were in a hurry and that they were still doing something or something to that. I don't know if you saw the post briefing after you left. That I was in a hurry to do what? I don't know if you saw. Did you see the post briefing? Uh, I saw the post briefing where they did say uh, that there was a communication gap. Mm -hmm. That's one and that uh, the equipments were removed from the isolation center because of Omicron, mm -hmm. and they wanted to fumigate the place. You understand? They didn't tell me that while I was there. You know, if I was in a hurry, why did I insist on going into the building? They showed me the building, and I said, let's go in. They told me it was a red zone that I couldn't, and I said, but I've visited other hospitals, and I used the PPEs and went in. If gov uh, the doctors and nurses can go in with their PPEs and are safe, I should be able to do the same. And then they told me that, uh, okay, they couldn't find the keys. I said, okay, let's go to the molecular lab while you are looking for the keys. I'll come back. And it was that drama that really got me uh, very uh, suspicious. And then when I went in, 
The place was empty. Old beds, not a single uh, uh, equipment. So you intend to keep up the inspections as, as we move on into 2022? In fact, uh, later today I'm visiting Nipri uh, in Abuja here for, for inspection. And like I said, I can't go around all the, the, the projects. You understand? So what I've been doing is randomly uh, picking and choosing where uh, I go. I just give like a day's uh, notice that uh, uh, I am coming. But we have gotten independent, that's third party independent uh, monitors to go around the various uh, uh, projects. On that note, we have to say thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Today. We, we believe that as you go around these facilities, you will take yeah. the press along with you. Yeah. Um, and we'll also be in on whatever it is that, you know, you you um, are able to bring out, especially as you, in your quest to remain accountable yeah. to Nigeria. Can, can I say something, Mark? You say, as I go around, you expect I take the press. I have been going around with the press. No, I'm just... But no, no, what I'm trying to say, but what gets reported is the negative. Okay. You understand? And I think that uh, there, there is an issue with that. I had visited about 10 hospitals across the country, and it was world-class standard uh, uh, facilities. Yes, the facilities that were put in place. They were not reported, but just the only one I complained, and just one aspect, the isolation center, the news is everywhere. So we, we, we should project the good things that we are doing. Well, we know here we certainly will do that. Thank you so okay, much for coming you. on Sunrise Today this morning. Mr. Claire Magba is the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. We can see.